knows you, he knows your situation. You and I, we want him to touch us. We want him to transform us. We want him to make us fully into his own image. Our lives, our family, and our church. Because when we are fully transformed into his image, our lives will have full impact on the people around us. Just like the Bible tells us that let your life so shine, through that transformation in us, people will come to know our God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God, we bless you this morning because you have counted us worthy to come unto you this day. We thank you for your blessings upon our lives, especially since we started this new year. We pass through week one of 53. Here we are beginning week two of 53. We trust you that this morning you have packaged for us something special, something spectacular that only you can give us. And so, Lord, we are fully persuaded and we have come in faith that through your words this morning, through our service this morning, through everything we are going to do this morning, Lord, we will receive your fullness and your name will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. As we go through your words now, Father, break it down unto every one of us, adults, youths, everyone, so that we will all hear you clearly. And Father, we will depart here today knowing full well that yes, we have received divine touch in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless us, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. We come unto our Sunday scripture, which we can also call our Sunday school this morning. And by the grace of God, we are still staying in Ephesians chapter 5. We dealt with verses 1 through 21 in the past week, and today we are coming to the concluding portion of this chapter. So today we are looking at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 33. Our memory verse is the last verse of that text. As we look at lesson 736 of our booklet titled Precepts for Christian Marriage. Precepts for Christian Marriage. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 5 and read verse 33 together corporately this morning. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. If you are there, say Amen. All right. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. What you go? Amen. Do we have anyone that wants to read that offering this morning? Anyone? Want to give it a try? Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Yes? Okay? The Lord will help us to write his words on the tables of our hearts in Jesus' name. <laughs> Let's go to our text, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 through 33. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 33. Who is going to volunteer to read for us this morning? Any volunteer before I call you? Rising. I like your glasses. So cool, right? All right, read for us this morning. God bless you, sir. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband 
as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own, hus unto their own husband in everything. Husband, love your wives, even I'm sorry, let me read it again. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spots or wrinkle or any such thing, but that he should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their, their wives, as their own body. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever ye ever ye eat in his own flesh, but nourisheth and shelcheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reference her husband. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe in the Lord that this mystery Will be revealed unto us fully this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Precepts. Now, when you look at that title, it says precepts. Why precepts? What is the meaning of precepts? And why are we talking of precepts in Christian marriage? Precepts are rules, doctrines, principles, guidelines. When you look around you, there is always that available in almost every area. And the essence of it is that it provides a channel for those of us who are in technology, even if you are not in technology, you probably use it. That's what is called best practices. It means this software this vehicle, if you use it in the best practice, you are going to get the utmost out of it, the way it's supposed to work. And so we are talking about what is the best practice that God has ordained for us in times of Christian marriage. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. First Corinthians chapter 14, Verse 40, let all things be done decently, let's complete it once you go, and in order. I know we read that typically when we are talking about retreats, when we are starting our retreat, we always read this verse, because we are talking about how we need to walk within the retreat camp, but this is applicable much more than retreats. Everything needs to be done in order, including our marriage. Isaiah chapter 28, the importance of precepts. Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. Because the title of our Santa scripture is not just giving, it's spiritually driven. Isaiah 28, verse number 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast? For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little, dear a little. Now as we look at this study today, the precepts and the guidance to marriage, the key 
to a Christian marriage, you can see it in our text clearly there. When you have a key, you always want to use the key to open the door. The key has been designed specifically for a lock. You put it in, you turn in, it will always open. The key to a Christian marriage is love and submission. Love and submission. This love is not only love husband to wife, it's vice versa. And the submission is vice versa. More on one side to the other, but it's to both parties. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. See, 21 says, submitting yourselves one to another. 22, he brings it down. Go to 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Verse 28, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. Verse 33, nevertheless, a memory verse, let every one of you in particular so love his wife. Man, love your wife. Woman, love your husband. As himself, as herself. And the wife, see that she reverence her husband. I know, unfortunately, in some cultures, we take this literally. We believe that the wife is the only one that's supposed to reverence her husband. And I tell you, husbands, you also need to reverence your wife. You need to honor your wife. The wife honors the husband, the husband honors the wife. Mutual respect, mutual honor, mutual affirmation, mutual proclamation, mutual love, mutual respect. That's what it is. Mutual regard for one another. When you do that, it is easy for the wife to submit to the husband. But when you say, oh, my wife, the Bible says you are the only one that's supposed to reverence you then you are saying you want to lord over your wife. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. So when both parties, when we reference each other, it is easier to have peace in the family. Maybe you are here a youth, you're saying, but I'm not married. I'm not thinking of marrying in, who knows, or a young adult. So what is the purpose of this study for you youth and young adults? One, Marriage is something that you are going to come into. Amen? Amen? You might be 10 now, you might be 20 now, there will be a time that you have to step into that fold. So this study is to prepare you for what marriage is, the best practices of it, and to know the responsibilities of a future husband, a future wife, but that knowledge is not for you to know it. You put it in a notebook and throw it under. I'll bring it out in the year 2050. No, it's to start praying for it now. The essence why God is allowing you to hear is so that the mistakes that those of us who are married have gone through, you can avoid it. Because God is revealing it to you now, so you pray for it. Number two is to appraise your parents. In the light of what you are going to hear today, what is the purpose of that appraisal? Is it to condemn them? Is it to throw them under the bus, as we say in America? No, but to pray for them. Now you know what God wants for your father, God wants for your mother, God wants for their marriage. Pray for them. Because when there's peace, when that marriage follows the precepts, there will be peace unto you too, because you are a member of the house. And lastly, it is for you to fulfill your role. You have a role to play in that home, in that marriage. You cannot step away. And so as we listen, as we follow the study, youth, young adults, don't close your ears, don't shut down, and say, that is for the adults. Amen? Are we together? Youth, young adults, are you with me? I'm not hearing you. 
Amen. Amen from the youths now and the, and the young adults, not the adults. Amen. Amen. Uh oh. Am I losing you so early? Or you thought, oh, this study I'm just going to slip off. No, you can't. And by the way, I'm going to be asking you most of the questions. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Three things we are looking at today. Number one, the wife's loyalty and submission to the husband. The wife's loyalty and submission to the husband. Verses 21 to 24. Number two, the husband's loving and sacrificial care for the wife. The husband's loving and sacrificial care for the wife. Number three, Christ's ultimate purpose for the church. Christ's ultimate purpose for the church. Before we go dive deep into our study, we need to know that the Bible tells us that our love is a soul love, which means it's love that it's to such a great extent, the love of Christ unto us is to such a great extent. That's why Christ could die for you and I. We need to note that marriage is a lifetime union. Also, to remind you, this marriage we are talking about is not a marriage between Adam and Steve. And it's not a marriage between Deborah and who? Janet. Amen? Amen. It's a marriage between Adam and who? Okay? Deborah and who? Johnson. Thank you, sir. Did you hear that? Youths, young adults, please take note. No matter what the society tells you, the princess of God is not that. In the Christian marriage, we need to be united physically and spiritually. I know there's a struggle on both ends. But that struggle, the Lord is taking it away today in Jesus' name. Amen. The foundation of a Christian marriage, of course, is Christ. The marriage that is built on Christ and sustained by Christ, even through challenges, will always fulfill the mandate of Christ. Amen? Amen. That is very important for you and I to know that. And it is the duty of husband and wife to make the relationship work. It's not the duty of our pastors. It's not the duty of your parents. It's not the duty of my parents, but the duty of both of us. We have to put in the hard work. That is why this message is not for our parents, not for leaders, but for those of us who are in the marriage. Number one, the wife's loyalty and submission to the husband. Colossians chapter 3, verse 18. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 18. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. We need to note that very well there. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto whom? To your own husband. Let me say this here. It's something that is still written for us, but I'm going to say this here now. It's very important for wives to know that you cannot submit to people outside and not submit to your husband at home. That is not scriptural. You have to submit to your husband first before you can submit to people outside. To your bosses, leaders in the church, leaders in the community, whoever. Because the Bible says, submit to who? Own husbands. There have been challenges when we, I use we now corporately, because I'm not a woman. I'm sure you understand that. But when we, women, we want to submit to our leaders, 
So our boss is at work. But we decide that at home, I do not need to submit to the man. That is not the precept of God. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, your wives, be in subjection to your own husband. God is repeating it again. To your own husband, that if any obey not the word, there is also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Why they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. The submission of the wife to her husband reflects her submission to Christ. If you submit to Christ, then you should be able to submit to your husband. It is not of comparative advantage, meaning it is not because your husband takes advantage of you or the husband will have more advantage over you. No. It is not, it is of divine order. The precepts of God, the doctrine of God, the guideline of God, and the arrangement of God. Even if the husband is not saved, the wife still has the duty of winning in by submissiveness and meekness. It doesn't matter the status of your husband. You might have PhD, your husband might just have elementary education. You might be a presidential candidate, and your husband is a custodian in an elementary school. It doesn't matter. You still have to do what? You have to submit to him. What are the characteristics of this submission that the Lord is talking to us about? Number one, it is loving, voluntary, and deliberate. It is not servitude or subjugation. Our love for Christ, our submission to Christ is voluntary because we have given our lives to him. When you got married, you did what? You decided to leave everything to come to this man. And so it has to be voluntary. You say you love him, then your submission has to be voluntary. Number two, it is as unto the Lord. That's what we read in Colossians, we read in 1 Peter. Why? In the fear of God. When you are submitting to your husband, know that you are submitting to who? To Christ. So if you know you are submitting to Christ, he should make it easy for you to submit to your husband. It is to our own husband, to your own husband. We explained that earlier on. Number four, it is sincere with pure motives. You do not submit your husband when you are trying to buy a new car. Now you want to get something from him. You've not been submitting all this while, but now you want to submit so that you can get something. Amen? No. You submit at all times with sincerity, with pure motive, not with ulterior motive. Number five, it is with reverence and obedience. That's what our memory verse tells us. Reverence and obedience. Obeying Christ, referencing your husband, honoring your husband, giving him high regard. A wife that submits to her husband does some things. Number one, pleases him. A wife that submits to her husband pleases him, obeys him, submits to his rule, seeks his permission, accepts correction from him, avoids nagging, destructive criticism, and fault finding. Proves to be of meat indeed, meaning fulfilling the desire of God for that marriage. Lastly, you are able to correct him in love. If you are not been submitting to your husband, how can you correct him? But unfortunately, many women experience difficulty in submitting to their husbands. Why? Because of pride. 
because of what you have achieved in your own eyes. Did you know whatever you achieved, if that man had not supported you, you could not have achieved it? You achieved it because that man gave you support to imperfect love, the love that is not coming from a saved earth, the love that is not of Christ, the love that has been contaminated by the right race. Number three, when there is worldliness and carnality, then we find it difficult to submit because Christ has been taken out of context, out of your life, out of your home. Why? Number four, because you have already backslidden. You are no more obeying the word of God. Lastly, outside influence, outside influence. And this outside influence does not necessarily mean from your work, does not necessarily mean from your family. There could be outside influence also from within the church. Remember the church is an open place. We're all here the same thing, but not everyone obeys that. And so don't let people influence you contrary to the word of God that you hear, that you believe. The qualities of a good and godly wife determines the strength, stability, and success of the family. The wife will either make or mar the home. What are the portraits of a godly wife? One, submission, of course. A godly wife submits to her husband. Number two, faithfulness. A godly wife is faithful to God and faithful to her husband. Number three, sobriety and gravity. A godly wife is sober at all times. We're not saying you should look morose at all times. We're not saying you should look sad at all times. Sobriety in God. Number four, of course, love. 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 Number five, discretion and chastity. Discretion and chastity. Number six.